Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to be here to discuss the puzzle of research evaluation in the context of open science and to share with you uh, the knowledge exchange contribution in this area, which is the openness profile. Um, uh, just by way of context, the knowledge exchange is a collaboration among six countries in Europe, uh, the UK, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, and the Netherlands, uh, uh, that we focus on uh, infrastructure in general and open science in particular. Um, so this presentation is organized in four parts. Uh, first, some contextual factors to set the scene of our research evaluation open science. Uh, then introduce the openness profile concept, take a look at uh, universities' roles uh, in, uh, in this uh, issue, and then conclude with uh, a concept we have for a summit meeting to, to uh, proceed. So let's get started. Trying to get this where I can read it or see it. Okay. Go to back up. Okay. So um, basically, the policy, um, European policy sets the stage for uh, open science. And um, a as a statement, the implementation of top down open science policy initiatives relies on vast cultural change associated with established recognition and reward systems. Um, I've got a couple of snippets here that, that give an impression of uh, this background. So the first is the European vision of uh, open science. It's titled Open Innovation, Open Science, Open to the World. And it introduces this vision. Um, and the idea of uh, open science here entails system, systemic change across all stakeholders towards bringing, uh, sharing all uh, sharing and using all available knowledge at an earlier stage in the process. Um, the next one is a report that follows this up and it addresses this issue of um, how to incentivize open science. And uh, they, uh, one of the key outputs there is a um, uh, career uh, assessment matrix, open science career assessment matrix. And uh, they recognize that uh, a more comprehensive recognition of reward reward system for incorporating open science. So uh, that is um, in contrast with the contemporary ways or traditional ways of um, assessing contributions to science, which is usually a quantitative um, counting of publications or data sets and uh, some citation indicators. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Uh, the next is a, another follow-up report, which looks at this a little bit closer. Um, and identifies the need to link top-down open science principles to bottom-up initiatives. Um, so that's a key in, in a way we think about uh, the cultural exchange that's needed. Let's see. Okay, uh, here's a quick look at the uh, open science career assessment matrix developed in the, uh, the second piece above. Um, and uh, I just want to point out one thing here. That, uh, so they, they looked at all the kinds of contributions they could imagine that are needed in terms of changing the priorities of research practice. And uh, what's striking is that uh, virtually all, um, everything but the top category are non-output uh, related um, um, contributions. So things that aren't uh, you know, an authored paper or a, a piece of software or a data set. Um, so that's the challenge. How do you get um, a priority attention to these kinds of contributions when you're looking at uh, a global system of, of science? Let's see, so I will now take a look at uh, some bottom-up contributions. So the, the open science puzzle intersects with a broader movement to address limitations in research evaluation. And I consider these to be uh, some bottom up contributions. And they're organized in a sampling of three um, types of contributions, uh, principles, frameworks, and then a, a national context, which is in this case, the Netherlands. So I think most are familiar with the, um, the principles, DORA, which is the declaration um, uh, for research uh, 
assessment, the San Francisco Declaration, where they want to move away from quantitative indicators. Uh, the Metrotide is a UK-based project that again looks at quantitative assessment and that it should support and not replace uh, expert judgment. And the Leiden Manifesto, which is uh, uh, a document about uh, using um, quantitative indicators responsibly in ways in which uh, principles about doing that. Uh, the next set are frameworks that are um, in many ways um, domain specific or field specific. And the point here is that some uh, fields uh, benefit from quantitat quantitative assessment more than others. So for example, in the STEM fields, where um, there's a, a priority on publication counts and citations uh, versus things like the humanities. So the first one is the humetrics framework, where humanities scholars are evaluated on the basis of agreed values, such as equity, openness, collegiality, qu quality, and community, and moving away from uh, trying to count um, journal publications, which is not a, a priority in the humanities, for example. Uh, I-norms came up with also a context oriented framework. Um, it starts with value, uh, considers context, options for measuring probes deeply and evaluates the evaluation. So assessing how the evaluation uh, went. Uh, this is a CWTS framework, the evaluative in inquiry, the last one. That's the institute where I'm from. And it's a, uh, what's interesting about it is a prospective uh, evaluation framework instead of uh, retrospective. So instead of counting um, outputs as, as your main form of, evalu of evaluation. It looks at uh, the research agenda of the Institute. This is a group uh, level assessment um, and looks at the performance on the basis of the uh, agenda. And it's meant to actually help develop the, the, the research agenda or strategy uh, as part of the evaluation. So benefiting the people being evaluated instead of an accountability kind of uh, assessment. Um, I put up the national context to give uh, an impression of, of some of the activity going on around research evaluation. In the Netherlands, we have a national level uh, initiative called Room for Everyone's Talent, which is meant to expand the ways uh, individual researchers are, are evaluated um, uh, across different uh, competencies rather than strictly, uh, again, a quantitative analysis. And this informs how universities respond. So there are two examples, the Utrecht University, which is uh, titled uh, the New Vision for Recognition Reward in Leiden University, my university, um, uh, which is titled Academia and Emotion. Uh, in this left column, I have a, the underline uh, is a link for those who download the slides. You can find all of these documents by clicking on that link. Um, so um, the point here is there's a lot of community-based, bottom-up kinds of um, um, initiatives and ideas about changing um, research evaluation. And in, in this national uh, set, um, they all um, uh, share attention to responsible metrics, uh, diversity and inclusion, integrity, as well as a commitment to open science. And although open science is a priority in these uh, research evaluation protocols, um, typically there's limited guidance for how to implement it. And that's that's a key challenge um, that uh, the openness profile is meant to uh, address. So I will move to that. Okay. All right. Um, uh, so on the screen is a mock-up. Uh, again, this is a, a concept stage. Uh, but the openness profile is situated here as a bridge between the top-down policy and bottom-up initiatives. It, it's, it's an effort to make open science contributions visible, uh, reduce the administration through increased automation, uh, and uh, essentially by linking these contributions to one's ORCID record. And it's meant to be a resource for both researchers and evaluators. Evaluators also have a challenge in, in if there are efforts to move away from quantitative indicators, which are uh, um, easier to use. Uh, they, they have um, challenges in terms of making change. And there are three observations that uh, uh, are embedded in this pro proposal. One is that open, uh, working open means enacting different roles, author, data manager, educator, mentor, repository manager, um, for example. And think about the uh, OSCHEM career matrix as a as a way to think about this point. 
Uh, second, many of the contributions to openness are invisible to contemporary research evaluation protocols. That's, that's the key challenge here, um, is, is, is a way, looking for a way to make them visible and make them count in an evaluation. And third is, um, it's still an open question uh, to what specifically entailed in making open scholarship happen uh, in the detail and on the ground. Um, so uh, the aims of the concept were to, uh, first to disrupt the notion of authorship in relation to evaluation. So um, authorship as a prerequisite to getting credit for a contribution. Um, and in this case, we want to link to contemporary research information infrastructure in the, uh, the ORCID, in this case. And, and what that does uh, simply is it makes those contributions findable as ORCID increasingly becomes the uh, de facto standard for um, um, research uh, identifiers. So it's a persistent identifier. Um, and uh, in this project, we focused specifically on those who are already doing open scholarship. So the, the, uh, the research we did, I'll, I'll talk about in a moment, uh, we wanted to focus on people who were doing it in spite of the, the, the relative disadvantage to spending time on these kinds of activities uh, to help us shape um, um, the openness profile in a way that would support people who are already doing it. Um, and the idea is that it's a lightweight uh, kind of approach that is adaptable to, to the changing uh, scenery, changing protocols. Let me move to the next slide, to the concept. So, um, so part of it is embedding these contributions into the ORCID record, uh, but the next part is we need a container to, uh, to curate these contributions as part of the ORCID record. Um, I'm making some assumptions about people's awareness about uh, an ORCID record. So there's the identifier, um, and there's a lot of content about your output, your uh, work history, um, associations, these kinds of things. Um, uh, but we needed this, uh, so we, we decided to use this uh, second persistent identifier, which is RAID, a research activity identifier, as this container. It's meant to capture um, all the metadata about a project, so multiple uh, collaborators, plus outputs, plus resources, and we're adapting it for this reuse. So the idea is here to uh, um, leverage as much as possible the automation uh, that ORCID provides in the contents. So, um, First of all, we want to leave space for researchers to uh, uh, provide a narrative, mostly to help contextualize and uh, articulate the relevance of their contributions to open science um, and the things that are contained in this uh, um, profile. But then to, first of all, um, be able to um, go into your ORCID record and identify those things that are related to open science and port them directly in an automated way over to the uh, profile. But uh, there are many things that don't have a persistent identifier or that fit neatly into an ORCID. So we want uh, to allow manual entry, to allow a text description and a URL where possible. Um, things without a persistent identifier, like an event or a blog post or uh, any number of um, kinds of uh, contributions that don't have this kind of um, authorship. And then finally, a manual entry of descriptive text. It's to say that we don't know all the things that are entailed and we want to be able to, to recognize um, uh, these things both for the contributors, but also so that we as a community a, a, or an enterprise have a better understanding of what is indeed entailed. Um, so uh, I won't um, linger on this one. It's just a more articulated, um, view of the different kinds of information types that we want to accommodate in this uh, openness profile. Uh, yeah, um, we, um, it's important to note that we uh, collaborated in this project with uh, these uh, persistent identifier systems, so ORCID and RAID primarily. Um, I, I don't know if I mentioned, but RAID was uh, developed by ARDC in Australia, a new startup in uh, identifier, but also data site and Crossref. And they, uh, in our last uh, plenary, they were enthusiastic about the project and willing to join a, a working group uh, developing uh, how uh, these systems would work together with respect to an openness profile. Okay, so the research project that underpins this concept. 
Uh, it's based on semi-structured interviews, uh, 20 of them across different stakeholders, researchers, librarians, infrastructure, funders, for example. Um, we did qualitative analysis using uh, uh, Atlas TI, and we followed this up with a plenary workshop and uh, focus groups, uh, putting the different stakeholder types together to really sort of um, um, stretch the openness profile concept and get some feedback. So some high level observations about the research project include, uh, we found substantial enthusiasm for open scholarship, also frustration with the current incentive structures and cultural inertia uh, towards changing uh, the, the evaluation culture, um, a desire for systemic change in how contributors to scholarship are valued more generally, and a number of suggested um, use cases for the openness profile, like um, annual reviews for individuals uh, to inform decision-making at, at a group level, and also to create incentives for uh, openness work. For the focus groups, uh, some uh, high-level observations. Uh, stakeholders, especially funders, um, identified a number of values um, that an openness profile would bring to their, their work, workflow, and, and often in daily uh, work. The ability to capture openness uh, contributions for um, grantees, so people who have an award who um, have identified things they contributed at an openness level, as well as a, a, in, in the aggregate across a different funding instrument. Um, many or most of them were already engaging with open science and grappling with how to evaluate, including their evaluation procedures. Um, many provided productive refinements to the concept but they also identified obstacles, especially in the actual changing, the idea of changing research evaluation. And that takes us to the next category, which is universities of uh, universities and agents of change. Um, I'm gonna talk a bit about this uh, European uh, University Association survey on research assessment in the transition to open science. Um, 260 universities in 32 European countries, the survey. Um, this was quite interesting and it matches up with our findings of the, um, the obstacle. So autonomy to develop and implement research assessment approaches. While responding institutions consider themselves as having significant autonomy to develop and implement procedures, they are also keenly aware of the influence of external factors and conditions, notably governments and research funding organizations. Um, uh, to add to that, um, in uh, career assessments, open science and open access activities are the lowest ranked category in the evaluation protocol. Only a third are considered very important, a third of uh, universities. And finally, um, the barriers. Uh, the main challenge is the overall complexity of the issue which involves important disciplinary and national differences. Uh, this was mentioned in our focus groups. Uh, in addition, our focus group members mentioned um, as a barrier to changing evaluation practice is all of the systems that underpin current modes of research evaluation. Uh, so, so it's a quite disruptive um, project. Okay, so that brings me to the last section, the summit meeting. And the idea here, as we come to the end of our openness profile project, we would like to try to address this impasse by organizing a sum summit meeting. And the idea is to bring together a high level stakeholders uh, at the European level. So that's the idea. Uh, let me summarize uh, what we've uh, discussed and what we bring to this point. So we looked at top down policy and cultural change via bottom up initiatives. Uh, the intersecting initiatives related to research evaluation and transition, the open profile as a middle out resource that brings opportunities, but also reveals obstacles. And uh, the idea of universities as strategic actors and uh, the impasse there. So the concept, our concept, we have four inputs here. Um, First, um, a forum for a summit meeting, a forum for uh, universities to work together on a common approach. Um, 
or engage with intersecting initiatives related to the broader uh, category of change in research evaluation, um, uh, or a, a summit with partners to help pilot the concept. And uh, this would bring to bear empirical evidence on its utility. This is uh, where we were trying to go with the project and, and what the ops and uh, with that obstacle in mind. And finally, uh, to bring policy together with practice. So uh, a summit meeting to, to bring um, influential uh, policymakers at European level together with um, um, the practices that are in the way of or um, um, the inertia related to change to research evaluation. So uh, this last substantive slide and the question I uh, pose to participants is, um, are there any suggestions about which of these inputs could serve as an organizing topic for the summit meeting? I mean, presumably we could address all of them, but um, uh, it would be interesting to hear um, how we might uh, organize it. And uh, related to that, are there suggestions for other ways of framing such a meeting? So uh, thank you very much for your time. I wanna point out to the right of this slide is uh, a list of all of the uh, members of the, the Knowledge Exchange Openness Profile Working Group. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clifford. Yeah, very interesting presentation. Um, I actually noted one or two questions myself. I just wanna remind our group, it's our last session. So as we've done in the past sessions, if you have some questions or comments, please go ahead and put them in there and we'll go ahead and read them to Clifford. Clifford, the, the one question I had, you had mentioned about the summit meeting and uh, I know I deal with a lot of stories here about the transatlantic politics, but with the EU, is this something with the open scholarship? Is there a relationship there? Uh, is there support from the EU? Has that channel not been bridged yet? Um, yeah, there's a lot of activities going on in, in this area. Uh, and I mentioned a couple of them in, in the reports early on. Um, uh, but, uh, and we invited uh, some of the policy uh, platform people to our um, plenary. They were going to attend and, and didn't at the, uh, this was during the first lockdown in, in, yeah. in Dutch time, <laughs> which is back in March. So it was a bit fragmented, but um, we thought, we we're now thinking that to make it a little bit higher profile at that level and to engage in a lot of the work that they've done, they've done a, a tremendous amount of work thinking about uh, evaluation and, and indicators. But, um, uh, this is specific at, at the individual level, and we think we can link this to uh, what is evolving at the same time, which are these um, um, database systems that rely on persistent identifiers. Okay, good. Let me go ahead and check if we have any official questions coming into the inbox. So far not, but that sometimes happens when we have long days. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I guess the, the, you've, you've talked a little bit about it, but the biggest barrier for you as far as getting the word out, we talked a little bit earlier this morning too about getting the everyday citizens involved in such projects because sometimes we're involved with this subject for 10 hours a day and that's the main job, but in our very Kurzfristig in German, in our very instant gratification society, how can we help get this on, on the map? Yeah, that's a tricky question. Uh, reaching the you know the the researchers uh, on the on the shop floor, and, and we found some of this in our sir, our um, interviews. Um, you know, uh, I think I think there's a power issue here. Um, we are all kind of chained to the current system, and uh, as researchers, we work towards trying to satisfy the the criteria. Meanwhile, these criteria are changing in the, in the Netherlands are changing quite a bit, but they still the decisions made are still at the top level, um, you know, at the university level. Um, I, I think that 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 part of it, the word that different kinds of contributions are um, acceptable and and uh, will be recognized and rewarded is happening. We need to go through a couple of cycles. Um, and it's but it's not yet at a point where they where they're worrying about how to manage new kinds of information in an automated way. So um, uh, I think maybe uh, a, an answer is um, uh, aligning with some of the other initiatives that are going on, ones I mentioned, um, uh, the intersecting uh, initiatives about research evaluation more broadly. Yeah, uh, I think because we all they they all face this the same kind of question about how once you reorganize the evaluation process, how do you manage the 
the troves of information that are uh, implicated. Understood. Okay. Thank you very much. I just got a message from our organizers that our time is, is truly running low here. So I think if that's the case, um, I just want to, first of all, give you our digital round of applause. We always say thank you. Thank and thanks you. to you also. Yeah, thank you for your, your work and your, and your contribution. Um, yeah, it really is interesting. And as a journalist, too, um, I think the one thing is, you know, these, these ideas are so important, but we have to try to get it out, the information, whether it's to politicians, to the everyday person, and that really is part of the challenge and, and in a way that they can easily understand it and digest it. So I certainly will keep my eyes and ears open for that. And again, thank you very much, Christoph. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Excuse me. And not Christoph, Clifford. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Okay.